Okay, welcome everybody to uh, my first FCPU tutorial. Right here, I'm just going to be doing a quick overview. Uh, I'll be breaking everything down into short little uh, videos so you can quick flip through different things instead of it ju being just a gigantic block of uh, stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is just go over the uh, what FCPU is and basically the interface and stuff. So FCPU, first and foremost, is... Basically, it's like a little combinator with its own built-in simplified uh, programming language. So instead of creating like some gigantic uh, Rube Goldberg abomination of many different arithmetic, constant, and uh, er <coughs> decider combinators all linked together in this hellish mess that would be hard to debug, even with uh, you know a little controlinator uh, debugger. Which you know you can only like step through things. You, know, you can't even set breakpoints with this thing. Uh, that would be an absolute, which is turns into a, like a hellish nightmare. And good luck trying to teach people how the hell that thing is supposed to work. You know, if you ha imagine you had just like this giant mass of uh, doom, especially when you have something like I said, I would say like Brian's trains or uh, whatever. You know, when you have something like this, you can't really zoom in on it. I find it's Unfortunately, but when you have stuff like this, you know, these uh, different little combinators and all that other stuff, it's not easy to figure out. And only the person that originally designed it really knows how the hell it works. So to get around that, uh, Con STG on uh, Factorial Mods thankfully created this little uh, contraption where you can actually write your uh, instructions here to replace the different combinators. And it's a lot easier to uh, debug. You actually have a built-in debugger. So like Controlinator, you can you can stop, you can uh, pause things, you can step through. But you can also set breakpoints as well. And uh, not only that, you can also look at this uh, little memory viewer thing right here. So you, have, uh, you can look at your inputs, right? So in this case, they have a red wire and a green wire here, these constant combinators. And you can actually monitor stuff in real time as it steps through and whatnot. So you can look here at your outputs as well, like that. So you can just look at these different things. You can see what's going on on the inside. And that's one, that's a big thing right there is just the ability to debug things uh, with uh, the FCPU. Now, that's kind of what it is at a, a glance. You know, you just have, a, you replace an ungodly mass of combinators with uh, basically a simplified script, which also you can copy and paste these things too. Uh, similar to how you can copy and paste uh, string, uh, blueprints via strings, right? This does a very similar thing. And uh, you can also insert your little uh, different signals and whatever so instead of having to uh, specify stuff like you would in a constant uh, combinator or arithmetic combinator or whatnot you could just uh, move stuff around you know you have the same access to the same things perhaps even a bit more and uh, yeah so that, that's kind of the basics on that okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go over the uh, basic components of the interface and uh, what's going on here. So the way you do your computations and uh, other stuffage, you know, like little decisions and whatnot, uh, and instead of the uh, what you would do with your arithmetic combinators, desired combinators and all that stuff, uh, most of the business end of things is going on through what are called registers, which are temporary little storage points, which uh, uh, you have eight of them total. R, you know, uh, they're abbreviated R5, R6, or whatever. So the first register is here, eighth register is here. And right now it's saying, like, this is the value here is zero, the value here is five, whatever. And each register can store both a type and a value for that type. And basically, what you do is you push stuff into the register. You can uh, add, subtract, divide, do like a whole bunch of different little um, arithmetic arithmetic, uh, trigonometric, and God knows whatever uh, type of operations they can do upon these things. 
Yeah, it raises to a certain power. I remember in trigonometry, there's another one here. EXP, yeah, so like uh, Euler's number, e to the power of whatever, as well as natural logarithms. You could do that if you really want to go nuts with this thing. But yeah, you can just do your basic arithmetic, add, subtract, multiply, divide, so modulo, or a modular arithmetic you can work with, exponentiation, and all that other stuff. This is, oh, and also, yeah, oh, fraction. I thought that was fractal for a second. Yeah, so basically rounding and whatever. All that is performed on the values that are put into these uh, different registers right here. So that's what's going on with the registers. Basically, just know that it's a little temporary storage point where you put stuff into it, and once it's in one of these registers, you can manipulate it. So you can add or subtract a value, say, from uh, register 2. You can add this to this and then store it in here or store it in here, whatever. It all depends on what instruction you're executing. You're uh, looking at this memory channel viewer, which is this thing right here, old memory viewer. You can look at all the different stuff that's going on under the hood. So memory channels, you have four different uh, memory buffers, uh, memory storage areas, right? And I think these could store up to 256 different cells. So you have like one, two, whatever. Right now it's just uh, concatenated. It's, not sh it's only showing you eight because it's empty, but this thing will actually go all the way down to 256 uh, for each memory channel. So that way you can store uh, long term a damn huge amount of signals in these memory channels for whatever your heart desires and you have four of them to work with so that's 1,024 1,024 total signals here that you can uh, store in all these memory channels which is pretty uh, insane so yeah the registers register is basically like kind of like a back of the envelope thing where you do your operations and you I don't think you can directly manipulate stuff from memory. You can't actually, when you put stuff into memory, you can't actually say like add whatever, say like take whatever is in memory address so and so and multiply it right on the spot. If you have to first pop something out of memory into a register, operate on that register and then push it back into your memory cell. So memory is a little funky like that. It's kind of operates like a cache. Because FCPU is basically like it's basically like a CPU or, or you know computer processing unit. So you have your registers, you have your cache, which is kind of like in the uh, kind of like the storage unit inside your CPU. So that's uh, kind of how memory works. Yeah, it, you can't directly operate on this stuff, but it's like kind of your pseudo long-term or medium-term storage uh, areas. Of course, you can look at your registers. You know, really no difference. I don't know why the hell this is really even here if the registers are only showing, but hey, you yeah, know, I, I more visibility. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's going to stuff that's important. Then you have your uh, input wires. So you have your red channel and your green channel. I turn on alt mode here. So through the red channel, we have uh, B. Got to show over here. It uh, says 1. Here, A is 1, B is 1, or whatever, going through your input channels. And, of course, you can see it right off the bat here. But if you have, God only knows what uh, abomination over here. It could be another FCPU unit. It could be Frankenstein's monster of all the different combinators that your sick, twisted heart desires over here. And, of course, or it could just be a, uh, you know, substation or a power pole line feeding into this. So you might not be readily able to see that what signals are being piped into it. But with the memory channel, you can see, I think, up to 256 or 128 uh, total cells can be fed into this uh, damn thing that it can actually recognize. So you have uh, up to those many in uh, either channel. I think it says in the documentation. Yeah, something like that. I'm not going to waste your time uh, by me uh, sifting through there. But anyways, you can see what's in your input wires all the way down uh, just through these buffers here without having to look away from this interface and like hover over stuff to find out what on God's earth is going into your uh, FCPU. So yeah, you have your green output input, you got your uh, green, I mean red input, and 
then you have uh, these outputs here. Before, originally it just used to be output. Now, since they're doing like uh, these like parallel instructions for operating upon like a whole memory or a whole register vector, there's uh, different outputs that you can look at it from. Not very much acquainted with those just yet. And unfortunately, it's not very much documented because whoever coded it didn't really put much documentation into it. But uh, I mean, there is stuff here for SIMD, thankfully. Single input, multiple dispatch for operating upon like a whole array of stuff. But uh, we'll get into that later on. But no, just right now, your output buffer is the stuff that is being sent outward. So your input's here and your output's here. So the output, I'll just stay with scalars here, which are just individual values. That output right now is just putting out a C with a value of two, C signal, C virtual signal with a value of two outward. So it's right here, right? So it's being output and uh, right now it says it's green because I'm using green wire if I use the red wire. Also have uh, the uh, wire shortcuts thing here so I don't have to manufacture these uh, damn things. And I can just use my uh, shortcuts here to really do that. But anyways, if I hover over here, which shows me what the outputs are, if you look in this area, you can see it uh, has virtual signals, you know, see uh, value two. So instead of having to hover over or if you're, or if, as you already know, if you uh, deal with signals a lot, you only show you like, I don't know, maybe eight or 16 different values or something like that until it just get, gets concatenated and you can't see any further. Kind of like if you're trying to look at your uh, logistic storage. Uh, where, where is that? There we go. So like that in the storage warehouse or something like that. Uh, if I had like an ungodly number of things, which I usually do with logistic storage, it usually gets uh, concatenated. You only see so many and you can't scroll through it. Well, if you were doing a similar thing with the FCPU and putting out God knows how many signals, you can just scroll through to your heart's desire up to 256 values per one FCPU. So that's the basics of the, uh, the stuff that uh, is going on here of what you can store, of what can be stored and the different little components that you're going to be working with for your memory channels, your registers, your input and output buffers. And uh, eventually we'll probably get into this more uh, advanced SIMD level stuff. But I would say the more important thing that you're probably going to be working with is like your control flow and interacting with external things in addition to uh, trying to do everything a normal computer processing unit in the real world does. So yeah, uh, that's the conclusion of the basics uh, tutorial for the overview. Uh, next I'll be going into the basic I.O input output on how to get your signals into and out of this device and how to uh, screw around with it. So uh, thank you for watching this tutorial and uh, check out the next one.